everybody. Uh, welcome to Candid Conversations. It is your host, the laid back down to earth life coach, Aisha Israel, and we are getting ready to start some girl talk. So I am really excited because tonight um, we are kicking off Women's History Month with a history making woman. We're going to hear about that. We're going to let her tell her own story. Um, I'm going to talk to her directly, ask her some questions. And of course, as you know, if you have questions or comments, put them in the comment section. Um, and we are about to get started. I'm going to uh, kick it off by playing her video. Um, she is a person to get to know. So hold on tight and we're going to find out what she's all about she's unapologetic she's a superhero on a motorcycle that's your throne and your helmet is your crown you're allowed to be a queen on the road that's what a black girl who rides through. I have never seen a black woman in a motorcycle ad. The first time I ever felt seen as a black female motorcyclist is when I saw Portia Taylor's Black Girl Ride magazine. Black Girls Ride is the first motorcycle magazine for women of color. We were created in 2011 to be the change we wanted to see. It started as a magazine, but it developed into a movement because Women who saw themselves in the pages developed an emotional connection. Because of that, we created social events that would bring them together. Black Girls Ride is here at Essence. 225 riders will ride a combined total of 200,000 miles to get to New Orleans for Essence Fest. This is our girls' trip. This is where your hair texture is celebrated. Your style, your fashion is celebrated. Your skin tones are celebrated. Things that bring us together and celebrate the essence of who we are. Some sisters having a good time who are in their passion, in their zone, who are just doing what they want to do, motorcycles. <laughs> When I was coming up, motorcycles were for boys. Girls played with dogs. Motorcycle riding has helped my self-esteem by reinforcing the fact that impossible is not. Black girls ride shifts the perception of what a motorcycle rider looks like by simply showing us an action. You pull up to a light and there's a little girl and she's on the corner and she's pointing and she's going, look, that's me, that's me right there. That makes you feel like a superhero. There is this generation of women who now know that they can do anything. All right. Without further ado, let's give it up for Miss Portia Taylor. Good evening. How are you? I'm amazing. How are you? I'm Good great. Fabulous. Thank you. So do you. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Um, yeah, I mean, what's it like being the creator of a first, the first motorcycle magazine for women of color? That's, that's um, exciting. You know what? Uh, every year it hits a little different, you know, because you can you can start to see how the culture has shifted. You can start to see how you've impacted um, advertising and marketing in the industry. Um, you know, I remember how challenging it was to get the focus and attention uh when when we first started mm -hmm. and um you know some of the the responses we would get when we were at you know when i would i would submit proposals or ask for requests for stuff and it's totally different now um you know and just just seeing the even if you look on social media you can see how the pages of mainstream media is now more inclusive and I'm happy to have been instrumental in that. Okay. So now tell me when, when did you start liking motorcycles? Um, you know what? I've always wanted to ride, but my family isn't that family. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, okay. um, 
you know, for, for my, my, my mom and my stepdad, it, it was seen as it was a dangerous thing. And I had a cousin back in the day that really did some damage to himself because he wasn't wearing the proper safety gear and stuff. Okay. And so, although, you know, I, I loved the look of it. Um, and then I, so in 2003, what happened was I had a, another cousin who bought a bike. And so <clears throat> he was like, Hey, I just bought this motorcycle. Why don't you come and take a ride with me? And he put me on the back of the bike and I love the feeling of riding, but I hated the loss of control by being a passenger. Mm. So I knew that I would, I knew that I would ride. It's something I, I would do, but I definitely don't want somebody else's uh, being in control of my life. Cause he was making decisions I wouldn't make, you know what I mean? Okay. Mm -hmm. So then a movie came out called Biker Boys. Mm -hmm. The the cheesiest movie you ever <laughs> me. This this movie was cheesy, right? Okay. But the thing about the movie was that there were women in the movie riding their own bikes. They weren't uh, passengers. They weren't props. They were actually actively riding. Okay. And I could see myself in them. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was the inspiration. So. At the time, I was um, a marketing manager at Adidas, um, and I had gotten a bonus check that year, mm -hmm. uh, about four thousand dollars. Right, so right. Like, and all my no thought to invest it, no thought, none of that. So it was like you either can. <laughs> I was going to either buy a big screen TV or I was going <laughs> to buy a motorcycle. <laughs> okay, and that's so, guess what you bought. <laughs> I bought the motorcycle, and here yeah. was it. You know, so that's really um, that was the inspiration. I loved the ride. Um, and I love, I just love the way it takes you out of whatever worries you have. So when therapy kind of a thing for me. Okay. So like a peace and a freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Especially long distance riding. That's kind of where I go. I have these long talks with God because, uh, motorcycling is the one situation where you can afford to be selfish, you know, in, in our everyday lives, we're taking care of our kids, our elderly, our spouses, uh, you know, our, our job, we have all these different responsibilities. But when you get on a bike, your only responsibility is to yourself and to the machine to make sure that you arrive safely wherever you are. So in those moments, you might, uh, especially on a long distance ride, you would enter a meditative state and you actually start to look at your life and you have talks about, you know, I have, I personally, I have talks with God about what my goals are, what my vision is. And, okay. um, you know, I start, I'm able to fine tune and refine uh, my focus in that way. Uh, it takes a lot of the anxiety out of a, a day. So, okay. yeah. so like my, a, a lot, like if, like if I were to read a book or write a book or somebody just sits back and watches a movie, that's your, that's your getaway or your me time. Well, it's, it's a little different because see, when you, when you are reading a book or even writing or, or, or watching a movie, you are dealing with someone else's content and someone else's vision. Mm, okay. You see what I'm saying? When yeah. you're on a motorcycle, like you really are focused on you, fine tuned on you, your inner voice, your inner thoughts. Okay. Okay. You see? I see what you mean. Yeah. So now, how did your love for motorcycle riding turn into a magazine? How did how did you come about? You know, being a magazine creator. Yeah. Um. Well, so I had always I always loved write writing. Right. Um. Mm -hmm. I have a history degree from UCLA. And so I love storytelling. And uh, okay. uh, I feel like every job that I've had was in preparation for Black Girls Ride. But what happened mm -hmm. was in uh, 2011 on New Year's Day, I read a book called The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. And my main takeaway from that book was you could be great at a lot of things, but if you're not pursuing your passion, you're wasting your time. Mm, I like that. Right. So I sat still after I read that book and, and I and I I read it after watching a Will Smith video. He talked a little bit about it. Right. Right. It was like a Will Smith <laughs> YouTube. OK. You know what I'm saying, just, you know, just mm -hmm. one of those things uh, on a New Year's Day. You're trying to renew and get inspiration and that kind of thing. And so um, I I read the book. I went okay. on that book, read the book from cover to cover in the mm -hmm. same way. And I sat still for a minute and I was like, you know, what, what do I really, really love? And I knew I, I love motorcycles. Okay. I knew by that time, you know, I had been riding was at seven years by that time. Okay. Maybe, maybe not. No, 2011, 2003 to 2011. Do the math. I don't know. But <laughs> okay. Give or take. I'm going to yes. say. You know, seven, eight, seven, eight, yeah. 
So I was invested in writing, in the sport of writing. I was invested in my community, uh, by the, the black biker community in Los Angeles, uh, particularly. Okay. And I just knew that this was something that I wanted to do to figure out how to turn my passion into profit. Mm. And so I thought about the, the stories of women. I did a search for black female motorcycle motorcyclists and I could find barely anything. You know, like a you know, Google search, you mean? Yeah, like Google search. And back okay. then, the only, only thing that would show up was Bessie Stringfield, right? Who is a, definitely a pioneer. She rode in the 30s and 40s okay. and had been recognized. Um, you know, so she had a fair amount of press on her, but there was no one else that you could say by name. Mm. Um, and so I, I, was, I was Googling magazine because originally the thought was I could go work for a motorcycle magazine. That okay. was the thought. That was the original right. thought. That would be like your dream job. Right. And then but when it didn't when I didn't see anything that appealed to me, all of the magazines looked like they were they were uh, developed by middle age, basically the template for what was then the motorcycle industry, middle aged white men. Right. Right. And that didn't fit for me. So in my head, I was like, you know, what? because I knew there were women who rode, especially in my community. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, what if we did SS meets like super sport bike or something like that? Right. That was the initial. Yeah. <laughs> And it would talk, and I'm I'm right now my ideas. This is what I want to focus on. I want writer education, and I want to do product reviews that pertain to women. And I want to uh, focus on you know plus size gear because we're a little more curvy than everybody else. And you know, and I want to I want to review different types of bikes, and you know, just yeah. all this all these ideas came flooding. The the floodgates right. came, came came, and that very night I did the website. I had the outline for the first issue ready. Um, I had, nice. it, it, it just was coming, you know, it was just like a faucet that I couldn't turn off. Okay. And, um, that's, that's where black girls ride was born. Okay. I, I just think it's so amazing. And I think just even to be able to say your name and say the first of something, I mean, nobody can take that away from you. I mean, no. that that's just awesome. And then for you to be our first guest during women's history month, uh, yeah, I mean, I went to I went to an all girls high school, so I was introduced to Women's History Month in probably the seventh grade. And okay. I think that was empowering. It was good to meet like people like Betty Friedan, Shirley Chisholm, like people sure. up close, you know what I mean, who were just powerful women and to hear how they think and, and what they say and how they move about and how they um, you know, get past intimidation or people's attempts at intimidation. Um, I just love it. And so I'm, I'm very excited for you. I'm very proud oh, of you. Thank you. And, thank you um, so much. if I had the courage to get on a motorcycle, you know, I have short legs. So Girl, you can do it. You can do it. There's, there are bikes to fit every size. You can definitely do it. <laughs> and I'm sure you would be the person to ask. Absolutely. But we're gonna, what, what I would like to do, um, well, you can, if you have any words of encouragement for any budding entrepreneurs, young women who are looking to get into their passion, as you say, do you have anything to say to them before we move on to the next segment? Because I want you to, you know, make your make your statement. And um, uh, just you know what I will say is. Don't don't let anybody make their vision your vision. Mm. Okay. Right. Um, that conversation is a is a private talk between you and God. So, you know, there are going to be people that don't see the, your future the way you see your future Absolutely. and don't ever let them hinder you. Right. The, the reason that Black Girls Ride is still continuing today is because I didn't know that I couldn't do it. Mm. I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to be able to do a motorcycle magazine. I didn't mm. ask anyone for permission. You know, we're in this, uh, especially the entrepreneurs of today, we're, we have a unique advantage with the Internet. You know, yeah. um, all of this is happening with pure technology. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you grow from it. You know, you're going to you're going to fail a lot of times. But the recipe for success is in your failure. Mm -hmm. And I would say the younger you start, the better. Because when we get older is where the fear sets in. That's where the the the, the bills that we have to yeah. pay, stand, you know, and, and you start to worry about whether or not you're going to have enough money. I wish that yeah. I would have started Black Girls Ride in my dorm room in college. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where somebody else was paying the rent, somebody else was paying <laughs> the overhead, and right. I could take everything that I had and throw it just purely at the vision. 
Yeah. You know what I'm That's how Facebook got started. That's how Apple right. got started. In college, yep. Well, they right. had all that time so to think. You got plan. all that time and all that money and all those resources at your fingertips, especially if you're in a in a in a college setting, a university setting. There, yeah. there, there are just so many resources for you. Yeah. So I would say, you know, take advantage of those. Take advantage of those resources, yeah, while you can. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, you know, find someone whose um, vision looks like yours. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so I looked a lot at Cynthia Horner, um, who was the founder of Right On Magazine. Um, and yeah. she, she's one of uh, our members. Yeah. And so I looked at her blueprint and, you know, obviously it looks a little mm -hmm. different because she did it pre, she did it pre tech pre internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, the, it's just the same, you know, you, you line up your topics, you line up your subjects and you, and you make it happen. And so that's, that's the thing you don't have to. So a lot of people get, you can give, Aisha, you can give the blueprint to anybody, but mm -hmm. the execution and the follow through, is going to be the thing that separates you from the past. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, you know, it, it, a lot of people are worried about, oh, well, you know, I want to start a t-shirt business, but there's already 3000 t-shirt businesses. Are they going to do it like you do it? You know what I mean? As, as long as you have your own vision, yeah. you can do anything out here. We're all born with the same DNA structure, the same, Two hands, you know what I'm saying? Right, uh, blood that runs. Yeah, exactly, runs it's, deep, it's, it's, it's yeah. a matter of you deciding, committing to the decision, and then working it all the way through to success. Okay, I like it. All right, it's time for us to move into our next segment, but I would like to invite you to stay and have girl talk with us while we talk uh, relationships and other interesting, interesting topics. Let's see. All right, let's get into.